Milling Through History presents The Life of a Storyteller. Hans Christian Andersen was born April 2, 1805, to an extremely poor family in Denmark. His father, with only an elementary education, introduced his son to literature by reading to him Arabian Nights. Andersen would go to a poor children's school and later became an apprentice weaver and tailor. At the age of 14, he would travel to Copenhagen, where he hoped to become an actor, but soon discovered he had a talent in singing. With a potential opportunity for a singing career right in front of him, Anderson was soon disappointed as his voice changed with adolescence and thus singing came to an end. Upon returning to school, his schoolmasters would always tell him that he had to act appropriately and that writing was not meant for him. But Anderson, being a storyteller, knew writing was where his passion lay. In 1824, he would publish his first work and five years later, beginning in 1829 and continuing until 1835, Anderson started to gain notoriety with the publication of short stories, poems, and a fictionalized autobiography. He even gained a grant from King Frederick VI to travel throughout Europe in order to help enrich his education and improve his writing style. In 1835, Anderson published his first set of fairy tales. However, it came with very little success. The stories were derived from fairy tales he had been told as a child, but when translated to other languages, nobody understood what he was trying to say. In 1839, Anderson wrote the poem, I am a Scandinavian, which talked about the unity of the countries found within the Scandinavian peninsula. The poem was an instant success and was even put to music and became extremely popular. But by 1845, the song stopped. In that year though, Anderson had his greatest success as a, trans a translation of The Little Mermaid became instantly popular throughout Great Britain. In 1847, Anderson also met Charles Dickens. The two men became friends and respected each other's work. They both often wrote about the poor and the underclasses, which were starting to have more interest being drawn towards them by Victorian society. Starting in 1851, Anderson began doing what was called travelogues, where he would write about destination locations. In writing these travelogues, he used a mix of documentary and descriptive accounts. And at the same time, he would also use his travels as an opportunity to include additional fairy tales. When it came to his work, though, Anderson did have some inspirational sources. One of his most influential inspirations was that of Jenny Lind for whom the story The Nightingale is said to be about. Interestingly enough, Lynn's own nickname of The Swedish Nightingale would be derived from that particular story. Anderson's inspiration from her was so great that he even asked her to marry him, but she declined, citing the fact that she viewed him specifically more as a brother than anything else. Hans Christian Andersen would continue writing stories, and his best works have been known as being The Emperor's New Clothes, The Little Mermaid, The Nightingale, The Steadfast Tin Soldier, The Red Shoes, The Princess and the Pea, The Snow Queen, The Ugly Duckling, The Little Match Girl, and Thumbelina. In 1872, Andersen fell and never recovered from his injuries while getting out of bed. At the same time, though, he began to show signs of liver cancer. On August the 5th, 1875, Hans Christian Andersen would pass away. Prior to his death, he had spoken to a composer on a funeral march meant for him and made a special request, citing that the beats of the music had to be rather short, as the people who would most likely be marching behind him and his first coffin would have been children. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe for future episodes of Milling Through History. And be sure to leave comments below with episode ideas. And be sure to take a look at our suggested reading page.